All right, so good evening, everyone. Welcome. Uh, my name is Hina Sood. I'm just going to do a quick introduction. I am a co founder and head of product at Xenoptics. Really excited to have all of you spend the last session in the Data Village with us this evening. I'm going to introduce this is Dan Robbins, and he is stepping in for Sam Sorsa, who unfortunately couldn't make it due to a last minute personal emergency. But Dan has graciously stepped in to talk to us about Brown Foreman's journey in implementing Xenoptics as an analytics catalog that has helped them improve and consolidate their use of not just Tableau, but all their other BI reporting tools. So I'm going to hand over to Dan. Thank you. All right, thank you, Hina, for that introduction. So yeah, just to reiterate, I'm Dan Robbins. I manage our data science and advanced analytics team at Brown Foreman. I uh, am not Sam Sorsa, but he is the boss. He's this handsome gentleman you see on the screen today. And um, I spoke to him earlier today, and he's obviously bummed that he can't make it, but he's also very excited to see all of the, uh, and make fun of all the embarrassing pictures that my colleagues here are going to be taking of me during this, during this little chat today. So uh, moving into the uh, conversation here today, we're going to talk about the analytics catalog that we've implemented and, and the power of this, of this work that we've done through uh, our partnership with Xenoptics to implement this technology. Uh, spoiler alert for you all, just to let you know, uh, implementing this technology, getting it up and running, it's, it, it has, has been a game changer for Brown Foreman. It is legitimately game changing technology. So we're going to get into the details here in a little bit and demo the product and how it's been implemented, but just wanted to let you know it's, uh, it's pretty cool and I'm a big fan. And I wasn't paid to say that. So here we are. So just a little bit about Brown Foreman. Uh, we uh, are a global uh, spirits, beverage alcohol supplier. Uh, own a whole portfolio of brands, uh, most well known being Jack Daniels. We have another brand out there that you probably know. It's the sponsor of the Derby, the Kentucky Derby Woodford Reserve. Um, have a whole portfolio of phenomenal products. Um, one of my more recent personal favorites is an Irish whiskey of ours called Slain Irish Whiskey. Uh, I highly suggest that you give it a try if you ever have a chance to find it in the store. So just very quickly about Brown Foreman, founded in 1870, so we're about to come up on our 150 year anniversary, so it's a big deal uh, to be that successful of a company uh, over the course of 150 years, being a family owned company. 4,700 employees uh, worldwide, uh, sold in, our products sold in 135 countries, and uh, again, with with the business that's that disseminated across the world, uh, we're talking about also a highly regulated space. So lots of information in a lot of different places. So you can imagine, you know, we're constantly having to wrangle our way through a number of different data sources, both internal and external. So uh, with that being said, we have a lot of information, okay? As you can see, tons of different data sources, and we were, we've been consuming it and have, and will continue to consume it in a multitude of different ways. Uh, Tableau being one of our favorites, but also a number of additional tools and legacy systems that we have in place uh, that we continue to use, and we will not be sunsetting. There's no plan to do that. So uh, with that being said, it's interesting. This whole story with respect to how we uh, became interested in working with Xenoptics had nothing actually to do with the product itself at first. Uh, it, was hap it had a lot to do with our implementation of Tableau throughout the organization. So the really interesting thing here is, you know, we launched Tableau about three, or about three years into our Tableau journey now. And uh, at first there was a lot of excitement, uh, but as we started to launch it, we realized that it wasn't gaining kind of the daily adoption that we wanted to see it kind of obtain over the course of time. So we took a step back and we said, you know what, let's see what's going on. Let's check it out. So what we did is we surveyed the organization. We asked a number of people throughout the entire global business a lot of questions with respect to data and analytics and the consumption of information uh, throughout the organization. So when we surveyed them, we asked them certain questions. Here's one of them. How would you rate your experience of accessing business information today? And uh, no one was completely satisfied, so that kind of helped us realize that we needed to probably change some things, right? And you can see uh, some, uh, about a third were somewhat satisfied, a portion were neutral. Long story short on this one, a lot of room to improve within this space, okay? So the next question we focused on were how confident are you uh, that you are aware of what current reporting is available uh, and how to access it? As you can imagine, um, very few were very confident. 
And uh, uh, the majority of the story here happened to be the case that uh, honestly, a lot of people just simply didn't know how to access information across all of our tools and you know, platforms. So we took that very seriously and then followed up by saying, well, how open are you to changing business information? So there's always gonna be a few folks who aren't you know, incredibly open to these types of things, but the majority, as you'll see, uh, the, the overwhelming majority at this point, almost 70% uh, were very open to change. So with that being said, we started thinking about, well, what's, wh what, what did end users want, right? What do they want out of this kind of uh, technology if we're going to try to help them better understand how to leverage tools like Tableau and various other ways of consuming information throughout the organization? Very crucial, one starting place, one space where they can go to, to access all of this information, as opposed to going all throughout all these different links and spaces and various analytics platforms, they just wanted to simplify it. And frankly, it shouldn't be that difficult to, to kind of meet them where they are in this regard. Uh, they wanted this kind of platform to be highly searchable, so we want to be able to search for content. Uh, proactive information, absolutely crucial. So as opposed to everyone out there wondering, well, you know, who's the uh, one person out there who understands what is the latest and greatest? We want a platform that can push to them what is out there and available to uh, the organization on a rolling basis, literally in real time as it becomes available. Uh, individually ta tailoring uh, this platform to you know, specific uh, individual needs, right? So we want to create something that's highly scalable, but also customizable such that we can provide people with a user experience that's specifically catered towards the kinds of analytics that they're doing in their day-to-day -day job. Uh, data source and tool agnostic, absolutely crucial here. As I mentioned, we're a big fan of Tableau uh, and we use it on a daily basis. However, we have a number of other systems that we leverage throughout the organization and so we need to make sure that we, in thinking through how to leverage this kind of technology, it can sit on top of a number of different analytics platforms. And then we wanted to be collaborative. We really believe at Brown Foreman in the power of working with people. Uh, collaboration is absolutely crucial and we love crowdsourcing. So we wanted a platform that would be able to allow people to share key insights, key findings, key reports with one another with, uh, with, with ease. On top of that, obviously, goes without saying, people like something that's easy to use. I think we can all understand, particularly if you spend time you know, developing products uh, on a daily basis, Ease of use is absolutely crucial to improve user adoption. Something that was accurate and timely, so as more information, new information was made accessible, uh, we knew that one, it was, uh, it was, it was accurate detail, uh, and we could, you know, again, promote a source of truth, and it was timely, okay? So people didn't need to wait a long time for, people, for, for information to be made accessible to them or have a, seri a severe uh, or a number of lags over the course of time and consistency with that. Uh, feedback enabled. So again, I spoke to the, the value of crowdsourcing and sharing insights and feedback. Um, we wanted a platform that could, again, provide folks with the ability to share uh, feedback with respect to really good reports, really not so great reports, and where there's room to improve, right? Uh, again, crucial here is multiple sources. We're talking about not just one individual, you know, we're not talking about just Tableau extracts or Tableau server or uh, one particular data warehouse space. We are talking about a number of different sources of data throughout different spaces in the organization. And obviously it kind of goes without saying as well, aesthetically pleasing, something that again, it's absolutely crucial that the user experience be uh, fluid and simple and unintimidating. Uh, that's another way that we just, we take that very seriously in terms of improving user adoption. And then very crucial here, ability to integrate. And that's, that's the beauty of, of the, the beauty of this product, what we've leveraged through Zen Optics is just, it, it was so, it was, it was almost seamless integration, frankly. Uh, and it was able to so easily connect across all these different spaces. It was it, quite nice. <laughs> so, had this problem, went looking for a solution, and landed upon Zen Optics. Checks every single one of those boxes. So, it's kind of a no-brainer, right? So from there, got into implementing it, and now we'll transition to, we'd like to demo the product for you, in fact. So, yep.
All right, so everyone can see uh, this, this is the product right here. Uh, this is what we call at Brown Foreman uh, our one stop, okay? And again, one stop powered by Zen Optics. And uh, as you can see, very quickly and easily, it's a very clean, clear, concise dashboard, very unintimidating, easy to navigate. So I'm gonna walk you through all of the various components of this, of this, of this tool, of this space, and uh, we'll chat a bit about it after, the, after, after we get through this. So, um, first you can see there's a, a ton of different spaces that we can focus on, favorites, reports, categories, workflows. I'm gonna take you through all of that, but I'm gonna first start with categories, okay? And if you see, if you look at the categories right here on the top, you can see that we've first categorized it by, by region of the business. That's kind of how we tend to think about uh, the way that we work with others throughout the organizations based on various regions of the, of the organization. So with that being said, I'm gonna focus on one specific region for the time being. So I'm gonna dig into US and Canada and when I click on that, you can see that there are 57 different reports in the U.S. So I click on that, and then you can see all of the various subcategories of reporting types that we have. Financial performance, consumer and shopper intelligence, revenue management, supply chain. So, shameless plug for uh, the work that our team does. We're, we're, we're very, very responsible for a, a series of revenue management analytics platforms that we've launched throughout essentially 20 different countries now. Uh, and w with the front end being Tableau. And so I'm, it's, it's something that's very near and dear to, uh, to, to the work that we do on a daily basis. So I'm gonna focus then, for instance, I'm gonna dig into revenue management. And then you can see a, a list of reports that are showing up within that space. Uh, you can see there's a, there's a mix of content, which I'll, I'll kind of come back to, but there's Tableau content and there's other different types of platform content all connected to those respective spaces. You can also see that there's essentially these stars, right? With zeros, zeros, zeros. Next to the one where you see US Spirit's arm, uh, there's, there's five stars, it's received a five star rating, okay? Which is fantastic news, right? You have some people on the team saying, yes, that's awesome. So we appreciate that. And uh, so, so when I see that, I'm thinking, you know what? I, I'm really interested in using that tool, right? But I'm also interested in understanding what kind of other revenue management tools exist throughout the organization. Now I should also be clear that ARM is not leg, not foot, it's called ARM, and it stands for Analytics for Revenue Management, okay? So again, I've, I've mentioned we've deployed this across 20 different countries throughout the business. So I wanna know where those kinds of models are available. Well, it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go ahead and search for it, right? So I just go ahead and I search for ARM, and you can see that first of all, I'm focused on my reports. I have the option to choose between my reports and all reports. My reports, you can see, here are all the various models, just like that. I can see none of them have, have been rated yet. They'll, be, can, they'll continue to be rated over the course of time as more people use everything. But uh, the beauty of this, again, is I literally just took two seconds to search for this content. I didn't have to ask someone who was closest to it. I didn't have to go looking in some type of catalog that exists outside of this platform. It was all seamless, as you can see. And so the other cool thing about this platform, I'll touch, touch on all the, the various components of it, is right now, for instance, let's, look, let's say I'm looking for another data source. Um, it's called Coupa, okay? Not showing up, as you can see. So, but I know it exists, okay? So it's not showing up because I don't have access to it. It's not under my reports. However, if I click on all reports, you'll see it shows up and there's a lock on it. So in terms of security, right, maintaining security, access to specific data sets, all very customizable through this platform, which is phenomenal, right? We in data take that very seriously. So it's great to be able to have that capability. So if I wanted access to this, I could simply click on this lock button and I could request access. Um, it shows you who the owner of the report is. It shows you a little bit of information about the description of what that report looks like. And I can simply request access and then uh, assuming that the, uh, the, the admin that's uh, heading over that, uh, head, uh, essentially the data, the data steward, if you will, um, who's, who's in charge of that would then give me access to that, uh, that report. So another really cool thing about this, again, I'm gonna search on another uh, specific report we work with a vendor in Australia. They, their data set's called Aztec. Uh, so we built this revenue management tool using Aztec's data. 
And you can see, um, first of all, and I'm going to click on this so you can see how this works, but there's a couple of additional emblems you can see. It's received a two-star rating, uh, and you can see this little checkbox right here, okay? And if I hover over it, it says certified report. You can see that if I, if I click on this and it opens the content, what you'll see up here along the name of the report is, uh, is, is that checkbox again. It means certified. So it's a beautiful thing because what we know is we're, we're trying to promote, and a lot of us in this space are trying to promote a source of truth. And in order to get to that, we need to make sure that we have access to uh, information that we trust and that's consistent and delivered consistently. And the admin in charge of this product can go in, essentially, those working you know, in the IT security space or on the server, can go in and specifically certify that this data source is good to go and, it's, and, and we know it's good to go because it shows up as certified when we look to uh, that in the report. It's really phenomenal functionality there. So I'm going to go back to my dashboard now. Uh, we've talked about, again, we've focused on categories and some of the base functionality there. Again, as you can see, um, a few things that I can do, and I'll speak to this in a bit, uh, we have favorites and we have recently reviewed, recently viewed reports. So the favorites are, things, are reports that I've specifically favorited. I'll show you how that works here in just a moment. The reports is recently viewed, so you can see what I've seen recently. Obviously, I just opened up the Aztec report. You can see that's there. And then uh, the other great thing, we talked about proactive monitoring and reporting capabilities. You can see what's new right here. So uh, that's coming up as essentially that's hot off the press. So again, that's great because guess what? I didn't even know that scorecard existed until like today basically. So it's, it's, it's the ability to do all of that within one space is just phenomenal. Now, one thing that I definitely want to, want to speak to, because it speaks to the customization, the ability to individually tailor the content to particular user groups, are these workflows. So as you can see, uh, my dear friend Sam has shared a workflow with me, and I've built a workflow myself. Um, you can have as many workflows as, you, you know, as people share with you. You can build your own and share those with others. Get into that for a second. But the beauty of the workflow, first of all, I open this up, and you can see uh, the report's going to populate, but when I go into uh, this space, there's a lot of stuff that I can do with respect to this reporting platform. So a couple of things, and I'll kind of allude to this here in just a little bit, but uh, this, I have access right now, this is I, in my workflow, I have Tableau content, I have access to uh, Excel or Google Sheets files that are sitting on the Google Drive. Uh, directly ac access to that. I also have access to uh, our business objects, essentially SAP reporting platform. For instance, you can see that when I click on here, it's taken me into that additional tool uh, seamlessly within one space. So, I mean, the ability to just bring all of these various analytics platforms together into one space is, it, it's, it's, it's priceless, frankly. It's, it's a huge, hu it's game changing, as I mentioned. So, uh, now, in, in addition to that, there's a lot of really good just UX functionality here. So a couple of things I'm going to touch on. One is, uh, first, I spoke about favoriting various, con favor uh, various content earlier. Right here, if I want to favorite this, you can simply click on the favorite button. And uh, again, it'll show up in your favorites moving forward. Pretty straightforward. An another thing that I can do is I can say, oh, you know, Dan, I love this report. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you an email about it or send a friend an email about it. So I'm just going to say, uh, Dan Robbins at uh, b-f.com. It should pick up on my, uh, there we go, it sees me, boom. And I'll say, uh, this is amazing. Boom, boom, boom. Say send. And uh, the message has sent successfully, gonna go to my inbox, and here we are. Got it. This is amazing with a link to that. That easy. So again, that's the kind of functionality there. I can also, I said, as I mentioned, there are these three emblems up here. I can also subscribe to this report, okay? So that means if I'm a fan of this and I wanna know when it's updated or various people are commenting on it, I subscribe to that. And you know, uh, a, a fellow colleague of mine says, you know, I, I, I noticed that, that this is not looking necessarily correct. Uh, I'll receive an update because I've subscribed to that report. I'll take a look and be able to comment directly back on that. But you can start this kind of ongoing dialogue with people who are using this content. Again, back to crowdsourcing and sharing of information and insights and the ability to seamlessly do so. 
Tons of additional things to cover uh, with respect to just the functionality. Again, uh, in terms of UX, um, if I want to just see, you know, I can hide, show and hide the sidebar, can show and hide uh, the uh, upper portion of the panel. Uh, if, 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 anyone, if anything wants to be shown, if we want these tabs to be shown on the bottom, they can be shown on the bottom. We can put them back up to the top, that kind of thing. And then uh, I mentioned about commenting earlier. I can simply enter a comment here, and I can also make that public or private. So I can make comments publicly that everyone can see that's subscribed to this report uh, or who view this report and view the comments, or I can you know, simply make private comments to people who, you know, I want to make a private comment to, you know, could be fantastic work or, hey, we need to fix something, that kind of thing. Here's an example of it. Um, again, the details are available there along with all of this other information. Another great, de another great factor of this is if I want to take this into its native environment, pull this out of essentially the Zen Optic space and, and allow it to open in its native environment, i.e., in this case, Tableau Server, I can open this in a new tab and this is going to open in Tableau Server in its, in its native environment. So then you can you know, interact with it just as if you would if you were connecting directly to uh, Tableau Server uh, without going through uh, this portal. So, uh, covered a lot of that. I want to also speak to the power of workflows. I mentioned earlier that we can um, see what kind of content's available within a workflow, and also it's shareable. So when I click on workflows, I go in here and a few things. One is I can see the workflow info. So the, and the, the key thing here that I want you all to pay attention to that's absolutely crucial and it, it, is that there are multiple components of, there are multiple analytics reports and types of technologies that are leveraged here. There's a URL to Google Drive where there's a few models that are saved. Uh, we have Tableau content, we have BW information tied to our SAP reporting space. Uh, none of that's going to go away. Okay, Tableau is an additional tool that we're leveraging throughout the organization in conjunction with that. So this, this provides you with the ability to, to essentially do everything that, we've, that you've heard that, uh, that that Tableau catalog can do, right? But across the entire suite of analytics platforms. So it provides that kind of flexibility. So it's pretty phenomenal and pretty timely to be having that conversation about functionality in that regard. So um, again, I touched on categories. The really interesting thing about categories here is uh, let's just say I want to look at uh, the United States and Canada. I can see the US, we've gone into that. You can see that in terms of looking at uh, subcategories. You can see that as a list view. Another really great thing here is report types. So right now you can see all the various types of reports that I have access to. Um, Excelsius, Web Application Designer, BW, uh, URLs, Design Studio, and Tableau. If I click on Tableau, for instance, there are a few different ways that I can actually see that content. Here are all the 50 reports. I can view it like that. I can view it in list view. I can also view it as a thumbnail. So if I'm familiar with a particular visual or f kind of initial starting screen, I can view that and know where I need to go just by looking at the thumbnail view. Again, you can see all of the various types of reports that are available through just seamlessly navigating through uh, the, 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 the left portion of, uh, of the dashboard. Um, again, when it comes to workflows, just want to touch upon when we go back to workflows that again we can see those that are that I have my workflows and I have those that are shared with me right so here's Sam's workflow if I want to click on that it'll open up the reports that he shared with me I have my workflow uh, again I can see the workflow info I can share this workflow uh, with a friend uh, or with anyone who's interested in uh, you know being aware of these types of things. So an example would be, you know, I want to build a workflow for all revenue management analytics professionals at Brown Foreman. I can build that and deploy that to those individuals pretty seamlessly. You can see that there are comments and sharing available. And uh, you also have the ability to, to uh, specifically edit your workflow. So if you want to do that, you can simply just open up your workflow and uh, make changes to it on the fly. One additional thing that I wanted to touch upon with respect to user experience, I'll go, and I'll go through my workflow to touch upon it, is oftentimes you might have a couple of different dashboards that you want to see next to each other. So if you go down to the bottom here, you see this multi-view. I can click multi-view and choose a couple of different views. Say enable, and I get the split screen of that information. 
okay? Just like that, side by side. I can do multiple screens next to one another so that I can see that all in one space uh, pretty seamlessly. And the exit multi-view, we're good to go there. So uh, the, the, the last thing that I wanna, I wanna draw your attention to is we talk a lot about the importance of adoption of new tools and we've focused on um, you know, access and transparency and ease of use and ease of access to information. Uh, another component of it is training. Okay, how do we train individuals as to how to leverage, for instance, Tableau, how to use Tableau? And uh, so what we've done here is we've, we've also provided a link to a competency center. So we've built out at, at Brown Foreman a BF Skill Belt program it's, it's, it's essentially more or less a precursor to uh, the product that's recently come out. Uh, it's escaping my memory at the time. I just launched Tableau, um, not catalog, but um, it's a bl blueprint, Tableau blueprint. So this is a fun kind of gamified way of providing people with training content and they don't have to go to a separate space to access it. They simply just click on this link within the competency center and they have, voila, access to that directly. So they can go interchangeably across all these various spaces just with, with absolute ease. So it's, it's really, really great stuff. Um, with that being said, I do wanna shift gears to one additional capability from an administrative perspective that I think is absolutely just crucial and uh, very helpful in terms of understanding things like report rationalization and license rationalization. So right here, uh, from an administrative perspective, if I, I can go to report management, click on report statistics, and I can see uh, the types of reports that are being consumed by the organization. So right now I can see that a lot of folks are using uh, Tableau-based content, um, followed by BW-based business objects and URL-informed content. I can see statistics on all of those, uh, what kind of content they're interacting with. Uh, very importantly, that kind of transparency is absolutely crucial for us because uh, we, we put out a lot of content. A lot of people make a lot of asks and we don't know necessarily if that content is being used on an ongoing basis. So, you know, we all have time and uh, time is of the essence. So uh, we, we need to make sure that we're spending our time towards things that are driving value to the organization. If we are not driving value to the organization, then we don't feel that we're doing the best job that we can be doing as analytics professionals. So this allows us to understand what have we done that's out there that people really appreciate and really love, and what's out there that we can probably think about mm, perhaps sunsetting over the course of time. That's one component of it. The other cool component of it, which I, this is really great, is the, this TCO dashboard. So this gets at license rationalization. So we talked about just a second ago, report rationalization. This gets at license rationalization. So uh, this shows you, for instance, just kind of hypothetically, we have a thousand users who are using uh, the a license. The, we have a, a thousand licenses being distributed for business objects reporting, okay? And you can see that um, essentially 1% of those thousand licenses are actually being used on a daily basis. Fifteen folks out of a thousand are using that on a daily basis. So it begs the question, you know, if we have licenses out there that we're paying for, uh, how can we essentially understand what the cost savings are? So we look at that and we say, look, here's the deal. You have 15 people that are constantly using this information. You got a thousand licenses out there. There's a lot of savings associated with us essentially transitioning some of those licenses and reallocating them to, for instance, Tableau. A perfect example of this is when we started with Tableau, we had 90 desktop licenses. And it's tough to make the case at times, as you all I'm sure know, for incremental budget. So how can we make this case and do so objectively with data? And we can, use, we can go directly to this platform right here and say, hey, go right to the CFO and say, hey, listen, uh, right now we have 1,000 licenses out there, 20 people are using them, we can reallocate the budget associated with these licenses to go purchase an additional X number of Tableau licenses because when we look at Tableau's license usage, we can see on a daily active basis, it's 100%. Everyone's using it every day. So you can make the business case for exactly that. So uh, with that being said, I believe that covers everything that I wanted to speak to during the demo. I'm gonna flip back to the presentation now because uh, I think we have some time reserved uh, for questions.